everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Uh, before I start, I just uh, want to say that I appreciate, and I think I speak on behalf of everyone in Israel, we appreciate your support, it's very important to us. Um, let's dive in, let's dive in. <laughs> I want to start before the story, I just want to tell you a little bit about the trans community in general and the Nova community specifically. Um, I don't know if you ever uh, seen, heard or been in such parties, but uh, the idea in those parties, especially those in, or, or actually it's not a party, it's a festival, um, is that you can come as you are. Just a second, something pop up. Um, <clears throat> you can be whoever you want to be. Um, no one is judging you. Everyone is uh, welcoming you, hugging you, dancing together with you. Um, I like to call us uh, modern hippies. You know, we spread love, we spread the light, we... We want to do good in this world. And uh, just so you understand, at this specific festival, we, we didn't even use any kind of plastic, any kind of uh, one-time use uh, materials. Everything was uh, planned to not only be um, you know good to each other, but also to nature. So on uh, Friday night, the night between the... Uh, 6th and the 7th of October, me and my brother Dan uh, were going to a party together with Adir and Sarah, they're a married couple. Um, we decided to take one car this time. Normally we split because everyone wants to have his uh, own uh, convenience to live when he wants. But this time we decided to go all together. We arrived to the parking lot around 2.30 a.m. and... Uh, we get into the entrance uh, because there are always very tight security checks. It takes time to get in. And uh, we were at the entrance about 20 minutes and, you know, surrounded by a big crowd. Normally for me, this is the first moments of the party. We meet new people. Um, you know, when the people are in a good mood, so everything is very nice and very... Uh, um, it's fun. We get in around uh, quarter to three and we start uh, building our camp. Um, we were supposed to be 33 friends at the same place. So we have camp with tents and everything, a place to relax. <clears throat> and around 3 a.m. we already finish everything and we get into the party area, to the festival area. And um, we had two dance floors, we had plenty of shops, we had bars, you can do a massage, you can eat. It's really like a small uh, town. And slowly more and more friends are coming, we start to drink, everything is fun. Um, it was supposed to be one of the best festivals that ever happened here in Israel. And uh, as I said, slowly more and more friends are coming. Around 5 a.m. we're already approximately 25 people. Um, slowly the sun starts to shine and we dancing in the dance floor. And uh, just so you know, in this kind of events, the moment when the night turns into a day, when the, the dark turns into a light, those are the best moments, and uh, we were having a good time. At 6.20, it became a little bit warm, and my brother asked me to go back to the camp so we can change clothes, and uh, he wanted to, to put some uh, short pants and uh, change to a short uh, T-shirt, and we are there with our friends, we are making fun, uh, drinking another drink um, and we have no clue what is about to come of course and suddenly at 6.30 the music stops and 
we don't hear any sirens, but they uh, announce that uh, there are rockets and that, that, that there is a red alarm. <clears throat> and uh, as soon as that happened, my dad called me and he told me that there are rockets all over Israel right now. I mean, south, uh, even in Tel Aviv and uh, all the big cities. So um, he wanted to warn me. I told him, don't worry, we are getting the hell out of here. I hang up the phone, I immediately say to my brother and Adir and Sarah, grab everything, we are going, we are not uh, staying, leave everything behind, just take your backpack and let's go. We are running towards the emergency exit and um, we try to find some cover between the trees because at this point of time we see hundreds of rockets but we don't have any clue about the terrorists. When I looked at the sky, I saw, it's very hard to, to explain, but I saw black sky. Hundreds of rockets from, from Gaza flying towards Israel, but also hundreds of rockets of the Iron Dome uh, trying to, to hit those missiles. And um, everything looked black. All the, the trails that they leave, you can barely see the light um, so we are hiding behind very thin trees and we are arguing maybe we should go to the take the car maybe we should <sighs> sorry it's a bit difficult every time maybe we should stay here maybe we should we should bring the car and run and uh, for 10, 15 minutes, we, we can't get into a decision. And suddenly we hear shots in the background. It was very, very low. We, we could barely hear it, but we heard it. And we were not sure if it's the army, if it's coming from Gaza. We have no idea what's going on. But uh, after a minute, we noticed that the sound of the gunshots um, it's in automatic, it's not a uh, single fire. Now we know that the IDF never used automatic. So we already suspected that there is a chance right now that a few terrorists already infiltrate Israel, but we still have no idea what's going on. And uh, at this point of time, I think no one in Israel knew. So uh, I tell my brother, give me the keys to the car. I'm going to bring the car. And uh, that's what I did. Um, I felt after like 30 second drive that I'm not, uh, I cannot drive. I was too drunk. So I asked my friend Adir to drive. And we're trying to get out of the uh, parking lot. Now there was no road. I'm talking about pure nature. So... It takes some time, you cannot drive fast, and we get to the road. One, once we got to the road, we had two options, one to the left towards Beiri, and the other one to the right. We look to the left, we see a huge traffic jam, so we decide to take to the right. Right, it's towards Rim. We... <clears throat> As soon as we turn to the right, we see a group of cars driving fast towards us. We ask them, we open the window, we ask them, what's going on? Why are you coming back from there? And they told us that there are terrorists shooting at them. So immediately we made a U-turn and we got stuck in the traffic jam and slowly more and more cars uh, piling up behind us. And uh, we can't move anywhere. We cannot turn right, we cannot turn left. We were just stuck. Slowly, we hear the gunshots getting closer and closer to us. And at some point, we heard them hitting the first cars behind us. And uh, at this point of time, hundreds, maybe thousands of people were just leaving their cars and uh, trying to escape from the shots between the cars. Um, at this point, we decided to do it as well. Me and my brother were sitting on the right side of the car, so we ran to the right side, and uh, Adir and Sarah, they went to the left side, and, and at this point of time, we we separated. We are hiding in uh, 
a small tunnel next to the road trying not to get shot and uh, we are uh, trying to move forward to, to get away from the terrorists and we get very close to the police car and the ambulance that blocked the road we find cover there and I call Adir and Sarah from my brother's phone I forgot mine on the car I asked them, where are you? What, what happened? Where, where, are you, where are you hiding? And they told us that uh, they are already in the open fields on the other side of the road and that they saw a police officer um, got, uh, got shot in his leg and he was bleeding and was bleeding from his mouth. So uh, they, uh, and he told them to run toward the open fields, toward the sun, because the sun rising on the east side, and Gaza was on the west side. So uh, I was talking on speaker and people around me held the conversation and suddenly around 50 people standing up and ready to run after me. I told them, listen, I cannot take responsibility. I don't know what's going on in the field. So everyone need to decide for himself. I look toward the open fields and I see that we are going to have a uh, a very, very, very long walk. And I see that the sun is rising. The time is around 7 a.m., maybe past 10 minutes past 7 a.m. So I decide to go back to the car and try to take my backpack with the bottles of water. I run between the cars. I try to stay safe because there are still gunshots everywhere. And... Uh, I managed to get to the car, I took my backpack, I put in two bottles of water and uh, I ran the hell out of there like, like crazy. Um, I get back to my brother and uh, we go to the open fields. We actually run, we are not going. And for the first 15 minutes, we felt uh, that we are getting safer and safer because we we had the gunshots uh, getting far, and uh, we also didn't hear anything in the open field. We felt that we are safe, and um, we're moving forward with big groups of people, thousands of people. And after 15 minutes, suddenly we hear gunshots at the open field. And if you saw the movie of hundreds, maybe even thousands of people running in the open fields, that was the moment that I was running as well. I was part of these thousands of people. I remember that I heard the gunshots from everywhere, from right, from left, from behind me, and even in front of me. So we didn't really know where to go, where to run. We were just uh, we were just running, and we felt like we are, uh, you know, like uh, like ducks, and we are trying to find cover. So. Um, we are running on the road and it was uh, left left to the road. There was a small, uh, there was a 10 meters drop to a valley and uh, we decided to go down to the valley and we start to slide down. And as soon as we go maybe three, four meters down, I suddenly remembered that uh, when you're in a fight, when you're in a combat, you should try to stay high and not low because you have no cover when you're low. And I stop my brother, I catch him with my hand and I tell him, uh, Dan, uh, let's not get there. Let's try to stay high. So we climb back. Uh, we wait for the shots to over and then we climb back. And as soon as we reach to the top, we, we hear gunshots and uh, gunshots at the bottom of the valley. And we see hundreds of people running, and we had nothing that we could do, so we 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 ran from there as well. For a very long time, we were under heavy fire. Um, Around 7.30, it's all started in the open fields, the, the, the heavy shots. And it was like that for 
very long time, for hours. At some point, while we are running from the cover to cover and uh, try to, to stay, um, to separate ourselves from the big groups, because we... We thought that if there are terrorists, they will go to the big groups. They will try to to pick an easy target. It's very difficult to say that, but that's the truth. And slowly we separate ourselves. We stay in small groups. We try to help people. There were plenty of people that just found cover and stayed there, didn't move. Um, we told them that the terrorists are coming. They are right behind us. They Some of them were froze over there and some of them uh, could barely speak and uh, definitely not run. And uh, around 8 a.m. we, the shots were directly at us, at me and my brother. So again, we tried to find cover going down a little bit to, to the valley. And uh, we know that we are not supposed to go all the way down, but we cannot also stay on the road, so we have to to find cover, and that was the only cover. Slide down three meters, we stop. I turn my head up, and I see two terrorists on motorcycles. I remember uh, that I saw the, the rifle of one of them. And uh, at this point of time, I thought, that's it, it's over, we are not going to survive it. I closed my eyes, I saw my life goes by. This is real, it's, it, it really happened. And I start to separate in my, in my mind, in my heart from everyone. And uh, after 10 seconds, maybe less, I opened my eyes and they are still over there. Another 10 seconds goes by and they just move on. They disappear. They didn't even look at us. Uh, my brother always tell me, I, I don't remember it, but my brother always tell me when you saw them, <laughs> one moment. My brother always tell me that uh, when I saw them, I immediately pushed his head to the ground and told, told him to be quiet. Right after they go, we climb back and we keep running. At some point, I see that uh, my brother is behind me. He's not running next to me, he's running behind me. And uh, at this point of time, he had the back on his back. So I, I took the back from him and I told him from this point on, you are always first. I'm running behind you. Um, <laughs> I'm the older brother, so I felt the responsibility. So uh, we keep running and uh, we are both asthmatic. So it was very difficult for both of us to, to run for so long time, for such a long time. And we find cover behind a huge tree. We try to fix our breath. And uh, again, we hear the shots getting closer. So after 30 seconds, I tell my brother, listen, we have... No time to, to to relax here. We need to go around. We need to move forward. And uh, around 8, 8.30, 8.45, it's very hard to tell the, the times there. Uh, we were totally alone in the field and uh, suddenly we hear the shots and uh, directly at us. Uh, I remember... I saw the bullets going. They, they missed me in a few centimeters and they hit the trees. 
just flying next to us. My brother told my brother thought he, he got shot and I I grabbed his hand to to check if everything is okay. I touched his body his body to see that he is not bleeding. So we ran toward the car and we find the cover behind the car. We are on one side of the car hiding. On the other side, I can hear the, the shots hitting the car. And at this point of time, like many times during this uh, two hours escape until now, I thought that we are about to die. That we, have, we have nothing that we can do. And uh, I look to the left, I look to the right, and suddenly I see, suddenly it was there, but I saw a big group of cars, maybe six cars, five cars, next to each other. They are all abandoned. And um, I tell my brother, let's try to crawl all the way there. It was 30 meters away from us. And uh, the terrorists keep shooting at the car, so... We thought if we stay here, they would just get closer to us and they would kill us. So we have only one chance. We start to crawl and after, I think, 10 meters, I I saw a set of bullets hitting the, the ground right next to my hand, maybe 10 or 15 centimeters. All the scent from the ground fly directly to my face, to my eyes, my mouth, my nose. And um, I immediately told my brother, run, run, run. And we find cover behind those group of cars again. They are shooting toward those cars. And at this point of time, I felt that God joined the survival story because we didn't know what to do and suddenly I hear that one of the cars is on and we can try to get in and maybe go out of there. We we run toward the car, we jump in and um, I just hit the gas pedal to the bottom and we fly the hell out of there. Um, at this point of time, we are getting far from the terrorist and closing in on the big groups. And uh, slowly, more and more people running toward the car and they ask us to save them. They actually beg for their life to, to jump in. Obviously, we immediately pick up whoever we could. And in uh, a matter of maybe five, ten minutes, we were already ten people in the car. Um, the car was a Hyundai Tucson, so it's an SUV. We, we managed to, to squeeze in. Uh, but I still couldn't find my friends, Adir and Sarah. Um, we were always in touch. We were always calling each other, but we didn't manage to find uh, each other. Everything looked the same, so it's nearly impossible to, to locate someone without any navigation. After maybe 40 minutes, I thought that if we are 40 minutes in the car, maybe we're already past them. And uh, I told the, the people in the car that I'm going to make a U-turn to, to find them, that I'm going to drive back toward the, the, the shootings. And um, one of the ladies from behind, she tried to convince me not to. She said, this is our life and this is your life. Let's get the hell out of here. But um, we were at a safe spot, so I told her, listen, those two are my friends. They came with me, and they have no other way to go back home. If I'm not taking them back home, they will just stay here. Now, I just want you to understand that at this point of time, we still don't know how big it is. And maybe that's why everyone in the car supported my decision, and they agreed to, to come back with me. So I made a U-turn and I'm dri driving towards the shots and I don't know how long it's been because everything was crazy, but um, it was between one to five minutes. It wasn't a very long time, but I remember getting closer to, to the gunshots and uh, at some point we finally managed to share location with our friends Adir and Sarah and we realized that we are going the wrong way and uh, they are 
still far ahead. So I made another U-turn and we were driving towards them. At some point, we were 10 meters from each other and for 10, maybe 15 minutes, we couldn't find each other. And then suddenly, just like in a Hollywood movie, they jumped behind a tree. And I remember that at this point of time, I felt like time stopped by and we were, we were screaming towards the run, run, and they run like crazy towards us. They jumped in and we we drive the hell out of there. This point of time, we didn't know again what happened around us, so we decided to go to Beiri. That was the closest uh, kibbutz, and we thought that maybe we can find the cover there. So we drive towards Beiri from the open fields, not on the road, and uh, we get stuck in the mud. Um. Luckily, there was another jeep uh, right in front of us, and they saw that we got stuck. They stopped. I asked everyone to get out of the vehicle, and one guy from the other jeep, he just jumped from the trunk. He ran toward the car, and just with his two hands, he managed to push us away. Uh, that, that shows you how much adrenaline we had in our body. So we get ourselves out of the mud and everyone jump in and we are driving towards Beiri from the open fields. It's not from the road, so the entrance is uh, a bit different. And uh, before the entrance, we see, I actually saw the Thai walkers. <clears throat> I saw their faces and they looked terrified. And I said very quietly, but I said, Something feels wrong here. In the few seconds later, Sarah screamed from behind, Ron, don't go in, don't go in. And that's all I needed. And I made a U-turn and we just got the hell out of there a few meters from the gate. I don't know how much you know. I assume that you already know. Everyone around the world already know. But uh, at this point of time, Beirut was already taken by Hamas, and uh, they they had a huge massacre in Beirut, and uh, we were lucky not to get in because we would probably find ourselves dead. So we keep moving uh, forward in the open fields, and we are driving next to a road, but we have no way to get to this road. And um, just before we found the uh, the right turn to, to get to the road, we saw another person in the open field just walking all by himself. So uh, we told him, jump in. Uh, his name is Ben. And later on, you will understand how important it was to that he joined us. And so we get on the road. And as soon as we get on the road, my brother tells me, Ron, I don't feel good. I think I have a, I'm about to have a heart attack. And at this point of time, I felt like it's not enough that we, we finally get out of the field. Now this, now I need to save my brother. Now I need to find a way to 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 save him. Um, just so you understand, we are ten or twelve or eleven people in the car. I don't even remember everyone. I was uh, driving on my right side. My brother sits, and on his leg, a lady sits, and uh, two people in the trunk, and another five or six people at the back seat. And um, as soon as we get to the road, then my brother told me that he think he is about to have a heart attack. I again push the the, the the push the gas pedal to the bottom. I drive like crazy, maybe one hundred and eighty, maybe one hundred sixty kilometers per hour. That's very fast, and I pass cars from left and right, and we get to the entrance of uh, of Akim. And I saw a police car blocking the entrance to Ofakim.
Um, I go out, I ask the police officer to get us uh, an ambulance. And then he told us, told me, there are no ambulance right now all over the south. They are all occupied. I didn't even have much time to, to think. I just ran back toward the car. And as soon as I about to, to move forward and drive, we hear the sirens. So if you know when you hear a siren while you are in the car, there is a you know safety law. You need to turn off the car, get as far as, away as possible, lay down on the ground and put your hands on your head. So that's what I did. And as soon as I get out of the, of the car, start running to, to find cover, Ben, the last guy that we pick up, he asked me, Ron, do you have the code to the car? And then I realized it's not my car. So I ran back toward the car and I turned it on again. And luckily it didn't get locked. Normally you have between 10 to 20 seconds and then it gets locked. And if you don't have the code, you cannot drive. So luckily he told me on time, go back to the car. <laughs> So we find cover for five minutes and uh, then we all climb back to the car. I drive towards uh, Soroka hospital. My brother still uh, feel really bad. And uh, at some point we got to, to the block roads that the police made. And uh, as closer we get to them, they I, we see more and more and more guns are uh, aiming towards us. and. I opened the windows and I told everyone, just put your hands outside and uh, scream, we are Jewish, we are Jewish. We had to go same drill three times until we uh, managed to get to Soraka Hospital in Be'er Sheva. And uh, they take my brother out of the car with the bed. This point of time, I went to the toilet and I almost collapsed. I thought I'm about to lose my brother. I thought that uh, I would have to, to give the bad news to my parents. And uh, thank God, 20, 30 minutes later, they came with the good news that, it, that it's not a heart attack, that he's okay. And um, we decided not to stay at the hospital uh, because we saw all the injured people coming in. And I saw a friend of mine coming in, one of the normal producers with uh, shots in his body. And I saw police officers with plenty of bullets in their body. The whole hospital was full of blood. Um, at some point they couldn't clean the floor they had too much blood it just it was very very busy over there